Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here, another topic, another video today on the whole subject of uh, digital archiving, which as uh, some folks who subscribe to this channel might know is a big interest of mine. I've been doing a lot of videos recently about this technology called the MDisc, uh, this archival grade um, DVD and Blu-ray that I think is an amazing tech. I'm super excited to have encountered it. But when you talk about backup and archiving with folks who are interested in this, some people are, I mean, it's definitely a minority of people nowadays who are doing happy to do archiving on tech like uh, the MDisc, which is of course a form of optical media. Um, it's basically very similar to the Blu-ray, just uh, engineered for actual cold storage. So um, we're a minority within a minority. There's a minority, probably, probably safe to say it's a minority of computer users who really care and think about backup. Most people are happy to just put their stuff up to the cloud and say that's backed up. Uh, a whole other uh, day's video or rant about why the cloud isn't backed up. And even if you're using the cloud, and I think the cloud's amazing, you still need to put them put some thought into a proper backup strategy or archival strategy, and they're not quite the same thing. Especially if you are a uh, videographer or a photographer and you're dealing or producing relatively large amounts of data, uh, you are ideally going to have to have somewhere to store that data that is uh, in two places, one of those on-site and one of those off-site, just to protect against any um, uh, disaster that might affect your main data store. So um, the main criticism I've seen against optical media for backup is people say, well, aren't you worried about obsolescence? And uh, that's what I wanted to record this video about, give a few thoughts uh, along those lines. So the first thing I would say about obsolescence is technology inevitably moves forward right to state the obvious i mean if you look at storage in particular it's kind of fascinating uh, what's happened in the space of just 50 years which is in the history of the humanity a, a mere blink in the eye we've gone from floppy disks for uh, for those who remember the floppy that could store about 1.5 megabytes they were initially actually read only then we had um then optical media kind of had its day in fact one of my first memories using a computer is going on to Napster, I hope the FBI don't come after me now, and uh, downloading some track and burning it onto a CD when that was like the latest and greatest tech and that was quite exciting to be able to pop a CD uh, into your car's CD player when cars uh, still had CD players. So Optical had this kind of actual day in the sun then, and then um, we had in terms of computer storage, um, hard drives, HDDs, People will then remember that SSD, solid state drives were the next kid on the block and now we're moving into NV NVMe and other types of storage. So what I'm trying to say basically is that it's inevitable that, uh, that, that storage media is going to evolve over time. Particularly if you think about, um, if you've ever been involved in, in the process of digitizing um, video content stored on old formats like VHS, right? So there's still very much an industry for uh, people, usually at this point, more elderly folks who have got their video libraries on VHS and they are they want to digitize it because of obsolescence, right? Technically today we can get your DVDs onto the next form of storage media. Um, so the point I guess is that if you're gonna take archiving seriously, you can never say, well, based on the history of computing so far and how storage has evolved, there's been no point in time at which what you had was good. There's always been this kind of forward evolution. And people who really want to keep their uh, video content or whatever they're archiving um, viable for, uh, for the long term are basically in the business of periodically moving from one form of storage to the next sometime before it becomes obsolete. So if you take the VHS as an example, right now there's, I'm sure there's still a lot of video being stored on VHS, it might already be degraded due to bit rot and etc. And now people will be putting that, probably they'll be skipping the DVD and most, most folks would be putting that straight onto a cloud for, uh, for storage. Now that's fine uh, to put it onto the cloud, you still need your on-site copy and that's why um, technology like the MDisc uh, as an alternative to NAS storage still has a place. So, the point I'm trying to make here is that firstly, storage evolves over time, that's to be expected. And likewise with the MDisc, we're going to eventually have the point in time at which that becomes obsolete. Um, and then we're just gonna have to move on to the next thing. But backwards compatibility is a slower moving process than the advance of technology. 
So what I mean, what I mean by that point is that if you look at uh, the storage technology moving through these uh, sequential improvements, as I've talked about, it's still possible, it's still very easy to buy or write a DVD, even though optical media, most people think is dead. Uh, likewise, LTO is still a very viable market. It's an old form of storage technology, very much relevant for archival in the enterprise environment, but it's still advancing. LTO is not dead at all. It's actually still a live project. There's still new, new LTO standards coming out. And if you go back to the floppy disk I mentioned before, you can still buy for not a lot of money, a floppy disk USB reader on amazon.com and floppy disks are actually pretty resilient to bit rot. So you could make this argument in 1970, you know, should I be putting all my stuff on flat or let's say 1980 after maybe hard, whenever hard drives came on the market, you could say, should I really be using the floppy disk for back for archival if for whatever reason you did? And 30 to 40 years later, we can still read that data just fine. So the process of backwards compatibility is a, is a slower process. And therefore, if we extrapolate from the history of storage evolution to date, we can expect that perhaps once in our lifetime, we might face an event where our data archival pool, such as perhaps the MDisk, becomes, becomes obsolete and then we're stuck. So the key to never reaching that point is to know when it's going to happen. Now, how, how and when are we going to reach obsolescence in the MDisk? Well, two, we have two potential uh, fail points or choke points to be aware of. Firstly, and this is, I think, the, the, the bigger threat, is that the MDisk will fall out of production, right? The actual disk, because only verbatim currently make them. Now, that's not going to affect you if you already have your stuff on MDisk. It's just going to mean that you're going to have to find a different strategy for archival. The second uh, problem that can affect your ability to archive on MDisk is that the uh, burners are going to be discontinued as well because if there's no one buying the disks, there's probably no one buying the burners. So those are two things, but they're not gonna affect your ability to read MDisk. If you want to be able to read your MDisk archive, you're going to need a drive that can read the MDisk, excuse the drilling noise in the background, and they're currently on the market. So I would say if, you, if anyone listening to this who's really concerned about the day when the MDisk, their MDisk archive will not be readable, I would buy a second drive just for backup because uh, uh, burners and readers can actually fail. Um, the, the laser ha has a life cycle. So I would buy one right now while they're on the market just to have that sort of as a backup in case they truly vanish. And if, if and when they do truly vanish along with the MDisk uh, as a actual me medium, that's the point where you have to say, okay, I'm probably, it's probably a bad idea to continue um, using the MDisk for archive. Here's what I have on MDisk, can we get it on to whatever the next thing is? And I truly do hope that we get uh, during our lifetime or during the next few decades, a uh, more modern technology that has MDisk's unique property of being pretty much immune to bit rot because it's actually fascinating that that really, uh, that, that sort of um, storage, that permanence uh, for storage has just been completely overlooked in favor of, let's just put everything on the cloud. So um, if that happens, it would be great. And then you can move over to the next thing. And then the process starts again. You're waiting for backwards evolution. And just to the point where you see it, and this, this might not happen for a hundred years. So you might be off the planet and this might be a, uh, a problem for, your, uh, for the generations to come or your kids, if you have kids, to worry about. So it's not something I'm actually worried about at the moment. It's something I have at the back of my head that I'm, as I'm currently uh, building up a uh, archive library on MDisk and keeping that in two locations, I'm just gonna see, and at the point where I find that I, I can no longer purchase MDisks or MDisks are no longer readable, I might say, or the USB interface uh, or something on the software level happens that you can't read an MDisk anymore, not because, and that would be the USB drive is no longer uh, recognized by modern computing software. Let's say that happens um optical media drive compatibility is dropped from all major os's that would be the point that i would say okay now i need to shift my shift my archive off to the next thing but i hope that i may never have to have that or if i do maybe it's a problem i'm going to have in uh, 50 years time um, and then we can move on to the next thing so that's that's my thoughts on the m disk and whether impending obsolescence if it is a thing is a reason not to use the mdisk you can see my conclusion is that it's not and i still think it's an amazing tech for archival and uh to the background of this lovely symphony of drilling noises i'm going to end this video thank you guys for watching more videos from me will be coming soon to this youtube channel